think it is uh, part of a process to get to where we can make the determination with regard to veracity. But I'm, I'm by the terminology for discourse analysis just like I am nonverbal behavior. I don't ever take a, uh, any one element, uh, a deception clue, as definitive. It has to be put into context with that one individual and then uh, questioned through that context to ultimately get to the truth. But as far as being able to say, here are these linguistic ind indicators and come to a judgment right then and there, I don't subscribe to that. I think it is part of a process to get us there, but it's not the end of the journey. Paying attention to nouns is, is a critical dynamic, particularly when we're talking about fraud, because uh, the in individual may refer to, uh, in part of the narrative, money, money, money. And then later on, the terminology may change to cash, cash, cash. Well, that change in terminology for the same element is always indicative. Now, we don't know what it means, but the fact that those nouns referencing the same thing changed are important. And, and when you think about this, everybody can identify with this. When, when I was a, a small child and my mother would call me, if, if she called me, Donnie, come on in the house, I knew everything was copacetic. But if she called me Donald Wilson Rabin Jr., anytime my mother referred to me by my full name, I knew I was in trouble. I didn't know what I had done, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't cop to a felony if all we were talking about was a misdemeanor. But when you think about the common sense of it, just at looking at names as they, nouns as they apply to names, that when someone references us differently, when I was a police officer, if when I walked in, if the chief said, hey, Don, how are you doing this morning? Then I knew everything was pretty good. If he called me later on and said, Officer Rabin, would you come to my office? Then I'm wondering why am I Officer Rabin now when I was Don at 8 o'clock in the morning? What changed the relationship? So the change of nouns are, are always going to be important. The qualifiers will give you great insight into how that individual uh, sees the world. And, and, and when we tie that with the pressure motive and the rationalization aspect of the fraud triangle, then getting that insight into how that individual perceives the world, when we get to, particularly with the compliance gaining portion of the interview, uh, gives you great insight into here, here's how this individual processes and by being able to, if you will, enter into that same world, the possibility of making that connection and taking this individual back over here into the admission, I think, are enhanced significantly. And let me say one other thing, particularly with regard to qualifiers and particularly with regard to auditors, is qualifiers can let you know that there exist atypical situations. If, if this is normally how we process the reconciliation or uh, we usually do this, then to that attentive auditor, that's going to let them know that there, there exist atypical situations and if nothing else, what they want to do is to explore that atypical because it doesn't necessarily mean that the individual is doing anything wrong as far as detrimental to the organization, but it could be a deviation to the operation that would allow for some type of negative activity to occur. It's going to depend on what type of question that individual, the interviewer used, and it's going to also depend on the context in which that question occurred, but a glaring example would be if the individual interviewer is asking a closed question, it's going to open open the door for equivocation. And so uh, anytime an interviewer is asking a uh, closed question, they have to be cognizant of the fact that it, it opens the door to equivocation. 
and remind themselves to process that answer. Is this individual really answering my question? Or is the individual equivocating in such a way that I will assume that this is the answer? Now to an open question, open questions open the door for a whole manifestation of linguistic devices that we can look at, whether it's going to the passive voice, whether it's going to the historical present, whether it is a shorter message duration, which is known as subjective time, in relationship to the amount of time they answered other questions to uh, the, the pronouns that the individual used. So the, the closed questions tend to uh, limit the opportunity for the possibly deceptive individual to articulate indicators of deception.